In our previous video, we explored how to save an image to the SD card, but we did it with a static image name, image.jpg. In this video, we're going to see how to generate a unique name for each image. Now, the path will be the same, it's just the image name we want to change. Let's replace the static string with a call to a method we haven't made yet. We'll call that method getPictureName. Okay, since we haven't made it, it lights up red, so we say create method, and there's our method. So this is going to return a string, and that string will be the name of our picture. So we know we had uh, image.jpg before. The trick is we're going to keep overwriting that name image.jpg. So think of a way to make a unique name every time. You could use a random number, but it's possible that, while unlikely, it is possible you would have duplicate random numbers over time. So that's not really foolproof. One thing that we know always happens is that time progresses. So we could use a timestamp. For that, we need something called a simple date format. So I'm going to say simple date format SDF equals new simple date format. And I need to pass a pattern in here, a pattern of letters that represent year, month, day, hour, minute, and second. So capitalization is important. Y, 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 all lowercase represents year. Uppercase MM represents month. And be careful because lowercase MM is minute. Lowercase DD is day. Then we do an underscore and HH uppercase uppercase is hour. Then minute lowercase. Remember that double M lowercase. And finally double S for second. So that sets up our template for which we want to format a date. Now in Java, uh, dates are recorded as the number of milliseconds since the epoch, which is January 1 of 1970. So what we need to do then is say sdf.format, and we need to pass it a new date object. And this has the magic to say, okay, I can take those milliseconds since 1970, and I can convert that to a date given the pattern on line 133. We go ahead and import Java util date. Be sure to import Java util date, not Java SQL date. And then we know that it's going to format this date, but it's not actually going to change what's going on here. And by the way, that is a bit of a confusing syntax. Let me split that out and make that uh, a little easier to read. Date now equals boom. Now you can see that the word now is actually an object, or sorry, the word now is a variable of type date, which is holding an object also of type date. And then we pass now into our SDF format. Typically, this is something you would do all in one line. I'm just putting it in multiple lines to make it a little easier to comprehend. Now, sdf.format is not going to change this object that's stored in the variable now. Not going to change anything. It's simply going to return a string. The string is going to represent the date that is held in the object now, but it's going to format it in the syntax that I've provided above. So Control-Alt-V will save that to a new variable. And why don't we just call this something like timestamp? OK. And now what we're going to do is assemble a picture name. The number, this should be unique unless we're able to take more than one photo per second. In that case, we might need to go to milliseconds or something like that. But for our purposes, this will be fine. So for a picture name, we'll simply say uh, image, and then we'll do that as a string. So let's say string picture name equals image. Then we use the concatenation operator, or if you prefer, string builder or string buffer, which is a bit more efficient. And then timestamp, notice that the timestamp on line 136 is indeed a string. And finally, let's do a file extension. We'll say .jpg. Uh, probably a good idea to make a constant out of that. Um, several different ways we could approve upon this, but you get the idea. Finally, return picture name. Now, let's run this through the debugger, and let's take a look at what it generates when we invoke this method. And notice it's going to return the picture name. That picture name that's generated is going to be essentially the second argument to this file constructor that we see here. So we have the image path that we got above, and then we also have the picture name that we're generating down below. So let's take a look. The emulator is now up. Let's go ahead and click the photo button, and sure enough, our breakpoint hits. And I choose F8, F8. Now I'm going to choose F7 because we're going to step into the get picture name uh, the get picture name method. But first, you know what? Let me remove a few distractions here 
because one thing I really like about Android Studio is the way it shows you the value of uh, variables in the debugger. You see right now we have the image path. Uh, we don't have the picture name yet though. So you can just kind of take a mental screen capture of this image path. And by the way, this is running against an emulator. Uh, it may have a slightly different path than you would see on a live de device. One thing I strongly recommend is test on a live device when using the camera. I just find it's kind of flaky on emulators sometimes. Nonetheless, I choose F7. Here's our simple date format. Let's keep an eye on the variables tab down below. F8 uh, creates the new simple date format. F8 again creates a new date. Uh, and if I scroll down in date, take a look at this, you see fast time, uh, the number of milliseconds since 1970. It is kind enough to kind of give us a, a friendly date here, Friday, uh, June 8th at uh, 2.34 GMT. So, okay, uh, let's go down and get our timestamp. And now once again, from our timestamp, we can see that in the variables tab. And I see 2018-0608-023429. Now note that is GMT. So let me take a quick look at my clock down here and I see it's 10.36 p.m. Thursday, June 7th, 2018. Now I'm recording this in Cincinnati, Ohio, which is Eastern time in the United States. So for GMT, uh, we have to adjust for that. We have to do a bit of math. Uh, it's Eastern Daylight Time, which means we're four hours offset from GMT, where Eastern Standard Time would be five hours offset. So in other words, take 1036, add four hours, and you're going to come to a, a, cu a couple minutes have passed since I got that timestamp. But add four hours to 1036 p.m., you end up with 2.30 something a.m. the next day. And that's what we're seeing here is 2018, uh, June 8th, which is a Friday, uh, and then 2.34 a.m. roughly like so. So you can kind of remember that. If I do this one more time, we'll see we'll get yet another unique timestamp. Now I'll take a look at this picture name. If I mouse over that or if I look at it down below, we see image 2018-0608-0234, so on and so forth, .jpg. We return the picture name. We come back. And let's take a look at this pick file. And if we look at the pick file in the debugger, you see that now it ends with that unique picture name. So objective achieved. Remember just a few of those last digits on that file name. I'll run the simulation one more time to verify that we get a unique number. So I go ahead and choose F9. And I pick the emulator. Okay, that's all nice and good. And then we'll go back and we'll hit the camera one more time with that same breakpoint still active. Fast forward a little bit, and now let's take a look at the timestamp that we got in the file that we got. This time, 023739, so 237 a.m. GMT, which is equivalent to 1037 p.m. Eastern Time. So you see, sure enough, we have a unique timestamp, and that will give us a unique file name for our image so we can continue saving images. So I hope this video has been helpful. If you have any thoughts or comments, let me know down below. Thank you.